In this talk, I will introduce the idea and practice of linked data. And I will propose a way to produce linked data from the comfort of spreadsheet-based data entry. Linked data is a formal way to identify context with, within data. By formal, I mean that a machine processing the data can find, access, and interpret the context. A typical README file is not formal in that while a human can read it and identify the section that lists terms and their expected data types, for instance, a machine will not be able to find this without some guidance in the form of a custom program that can parse the bespoke structure of the README file. By context, I mean the concepts and relationships that are needed to understand both the data's meaning and the data's formatting. By within data, I mean within the same delivered artifact as the data itself. Often the documentation for a data object is not directly linked or provided in line within the data object. Even if this context is delivered alongside the data object, for example, as a readme file in the same shared directory, there is a risk that the data object will be lifted and forwarded along without its sibling. Sir Tim Berners-Lee's note on linked data gives a succinct description of its principal expectations. First, use uniform resource identifiers, URIs, as names for things. Second, use HTTP URIs so that people can resolve these names with, with web browsers. Third, when someone requests such a URI, provide a formal response using the Web Standard Resource Description Framework, or RDF. Finally, your linked data should link to other people's linked data when appropriate to provide even more context just like how our web documents link to other people's web documents to provide additional context. There are many standard serializations for linked data. One of them is JSON-LD, where the LD stands for linked data. Using JavaScript object notation, or JSON, to serialize data is quite popular. A JSON-LD document is a JSON document that includes its context. Here I show an example JSON-LD document. This is also shown at JSONLD.org. The document makes statements about a resource identified by the value of the at ID key. That value is a uniform resource identifier, or URI, under a different namespace at the dbpedia.org domain with different governance than JSONLD.org, and that's okay. The JSONLD document has another special key, at context, that links to its context to help a human and their machine agents to understand the meaning and formatting of this JSON document. If we resolve the at context link, we get a map of vocabulary terms to URIs that in turn have more information. Our processor might already know about XML schema data types and doesn't need to follow that link to know what to expect for date formatting. We see that the spouse field is to be interpreted not as a general string value, but as a URI, given the at type directive in the context. JSON-LD is a great way to ensure that a JSON dataset's context travels with the data, whether served via a document database like MongoDB or via a web API that returns requests for data as JSON responses. But we're not here for JSON. We are here for spreadsheets. How can I power up my spreadsheet to be linked data? CSV on the web, or CSVW, is a standard that helps you build sidecars for spreadsheets. The term sidecar is used for a functional addition. A motorcycle sidecar can carry things and people. A Kubernetes sidecar container has access to the namespace and storage volumes of its pod's main container, and so supports auxiliary work. Unstructured documentation, for example, a typical readme file, is not a functional sidecar. The World Wide Web Consortium's CSV on the Web Working Group published seven documents, including a note on 25 identified use cases and a primer on effective use of its recommendations in practice. For example, when you're serving a CSV file like mydata.csv, you can serve a JSON-LD sidecar by adding dash metadata dot JSON to the name, and you use the CSVW vocabulary to provide extra information about your data. 
Before I elaborate on spreadsheet-based linked data, I want to highlight the relationship between linking and packaging. Linking and packaging are complementary techniques. With linked data, your entry point is the data, which links out to context and other data. With data packages, your entry point is the package, which links into the contained data and its metadata. A great example of data packaging is the frictionless data family of specifications. Just like a Docker file can package up a file system and provide an entry point to its resources, a data package yields a container that facilitates white glove service to the data within. When it comes to linking, links can be embedded within the data, like what I showed with the at context field of JSON-LD, or they can be not embedded within the data, as is the case with CSVW sidecars or link headers. What could a standard for embedded links do for spreadsheets? Just like you can print out barcode labels to stick onto sample carriers in a laboratory, you could mint barcode labels for your columns instead of or in addition to a column header label that may or may not be understood by a data consumer, a barcode label will, would let someone unambiguously fetch the meaning and format of a column. Many code editors have a go-to definition or go-to declaration function. You can control click on a symbol in your code and the editor will take you to where that symbol is defined, even if the definition is in another module or package you have imported. If we use HTTP URIs for our barcodes, then we can use the existing infrastructure of the web to read them. Here I show a basic example of a CSV LD file. The format version directive says what version of the CSV LD format should be assumed for this file. The vocab base directive points to a vocabulary base, which is like a database, but for vocabulary. A tool reading this file can help resolve each column label in the header to a definition in the vocab base. I'll now delve a little deeper into CSVLD, including more on the format version and vocab base directives. First, a CSVLD file is still a CSV file. Whatever comes before format version on the first line is inferred to be the comment prefix, and whatever comes after format version and before the H in the HTTP URI is inferred to be the delimiter. The CSV on the web vocabulary includes terms for dialect descriptions. CSVW identifies the octothorpe as the default comment prefix and the comma as the default delimiter, and that's what I use in my examples. The goals of the format version directive on the first line are twofold. The first goal is to help someone new to the format learn more. Follow your nose is a widely celebrated linked data pattern. The idea is that people as well as their software agents will sniff out links and follow them when it makes sense for them to do so. Hence the second goal, help someone's software agents know what to expect in the rest of the file. The next line is a directive that identifies a, vo a vocabulary base for column labels. If a column label is not given as a URI, then the vocab base can be queried for the label. There are two cases here. Either the column label is the last part of the corresponding URI with the vocab base URI as the prefix, or there is a full URI in the vocab base that has been annotated with the column label as a human readable label for the URI. In this way, a data producer can retain preferred column labels, even if they contain spaces or otherwise would not form part of a valid URI. As an alternative to maintaining all column vocabulary terms in one vocab base, you can directly reuse vocabularies maintained by others. Here I enable succinct linking to terms hosted by the example.org organization, which I trust. I link to the atom entry in its namespace for terms from the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. I do this because doing so can signal to a CSVLD processor that all values for this column must be standard symbols for atomic elements. If you like another organization's vocabulary, but you don't trust their governance, you can always fork their terms into your vocab base 
or to a prefix namespace you govern, maintaining links upstream to the source terminology. Apart from directive statements, you can also include RDF statements in the header. Resource description framework statements are in the form of triples with a subject, predicate, and object. The subject of each triple is the current sheet. The predicate is always a URI. And in this example, I am saying that CSVW metadata for this sheet is available at the URI given as the object of the triple. The header also accommodates comment lines for which the comment prefix is followed directly by a space character. Finally, there is one additional directive in CSVLD beyond format version, vocab base, and prefix, and that is the ID directive, which allows you to assign a URI to identify the sheet and thus the subject of any RDF statements in the header. From the FAIR guiding principles for scientific data management and stewardship, where FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, one of the elements of interoperability is that data and metadata vocabularies themselves follow FAIR principles. In this case, the vocabulary terms need to be resolvable so people can look them up. There are different ways to do this. One way is to host a static site with an HTML document for a human readable version of the vocabulary and to have the HTML document include a link in its header to an RDF document that is related as an alternative machine actionable representation of the vocabulary. RDF site summary feeds, that is RSS feeds, are also communicated via such HTML header links. In the near term, I hope that CSVLD proves useful for validating and collecting data from individual spreadsheets. Columns may be validated independently of each other. Beyond that, a statement in the header may indicate to a processor that each row in this sheet should validate as a certain kind of entity, meaning certain columns are required to be present and valid, and other optional columns, if present, will also be validated and collected. Furthermore, there are standard affordances in RDF ontologies, such as property hierarchies, that could help to make the use of vocabularies flexible and to layer on new meaning over time via compatible additive changes rather than breaking changes. Eventually, I hope that the basic column and entity validation facilities of CSVLD processors will allow you to unify known spreadsheets under your governance via column URIs and ultimately to discover related spreadsheets hosted elsewhere by allocating computation budgets to your software agents to follow their noses for more linked data. After this talk, come find me in the CSVConf Slack. Also, if you raise issues in the CSVLD namespaces GitHub repository, I will see them, or feel free to email me. If you are a materials scientist or no one, I am involved with a data dictionaries working group as part of the Materials Research Data Alliance. Come join the discussion on matsci.org. If you are a microbiome researcher or no one, I am also involved with a microbiome data collaborative, and you can see what we've been cooking up as a pilot project. Finally, the Recurse Center is a great venue for a professional mini sabbatical. And if you are a recursor, I am one too, and I hang out in the Zulip chat a lot. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you so much. That was a really great talk. I am going to turn on my video now, and there are several questions. So the, uh, as a reminder, participants, you can upvote questions. I'm going to take the top question right now, which is, can you assign definitions to rows or individual cells or just columns? Great question. So the, the CSVW specification allows you to do much more. Um, and so I think for simplicity's sake, just with CSVLD, there's just the column stuff, but the link out to CSVW allows you to do a lot of things and relate multiple sheets. And it's just a fantastic voc vocabulary and specification. So I would recommend people look at the CSVW uh, W3C recommendations. 
Thank you. Okay, next question. Has the molecule example been deployed? If so, where? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so if you look on the uh, that GitHub repository, um, it will link to uh, a deployment of, of the, the examples here, the namespaces. Um, the, the actual Excel spreadsheet, I, I don't believe is deployed, but, but my slides are there. Um, I just use that as a, as a simple example um, for, for demonstration purposes. But yes, all of the stuff, all the namespace code and examples are available at the GitHub repository. Thanks. Okay, I think we have time for at least one more question, which is, how does CSV LD relate to CSV schemas, CSV schema language or JSON table schema? CSV schema language or JSON table schema? Uh, I don't know. I would love to do sort of a mapping um, to be clear on, on the relationships. Um, rather than talk in hand wavy terms. Um, I think that'd be very helpful. Um, so whoever asked that, I think, yeah, it's great to be able to have qualified relationships between things and so people can uh, discuss them. Um, but I can't give a summary right now of those, but thanks for bringing those up. It's a great question. I am going to give us 30 seconds to do one final question which is how do we get scientists to upgrade to this level of documentation and formatting when they are happy to send us Excel sheets? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I think part of it will be having nice tooling um, to help give them interactive feedback. So um, one thing that's hopefully nice out of the box is the annotation properties where people can be able to look up their column names and they might love to be able to just spread, you know, distribute that to people and have automatic data dictionaries. Um, the other thing is if they're online processors, it could be very nice to help people validate their spreadsheets um, because I know Excel does all sorts of funny things with converting fields. Um, and so I think a lot of scientists might appreciate that as sort of like a last step before uploading it as supplementary information or something. Um, so I think tooling um, would, be, would be very helpful um, for that sort of thing.